In order for you to have, build on, and maintain a website, you're going to need at least a domain name, a web hosting account, and some means of transferring files back and forth between your computer and your website. Now, once you have purchased your domain name, purchased your web hosting service, and you've assigned the name service from your hosting service to your domain name, you're going to need to have login access to your server and FTP. When you purchase your web hosting service, you're sent some important information about your hosting account, and among this information is the login details for your FTP and server. Now your server, what I'm referring to there is the control panel, and that can be one of a couple of different options. I myself am most familiar with, and really love, cPanel as my control panel. Another one is Plesk, and there's a few other ones out there that are a little less popular, but still basically do the same thing, only do it differently. Now when you connected your hosting service to your domain name, you use some info that your hosting service sent you when you first purchase their services. Now more than likely in that same email should also be the login details for your FTP and control panel for your server. Now this is what it might look like and of course if you cannot locate it then simply contact your hosting company and have them send it to you again. Now this is one that I received from D9 and it was a rather long email and they had it sectioned off into several different segments. This is number four. Now, D9 Hosting is a fantastic hosting service, but depending upon your hosting service, it may look a little bit different, and for that matter, they may send you different login type credentials. For example, on the host name for D9, this is the way it looks. It starts off with www, then the actual domain name, .com. Sometimes, but not always, it might also begin with FTP, or for a secure login for FTP, it might even be SFTP, S is in Sam, FTP, not the www. Then they also give you the username and password. Now, like it says here, an alternative might also be the IP address in place of the actual domain name here. Let me show you one that I also received from Namecheap. And Namecheap is pretty well known for their domain names, but they also have a hosting account as well. And this, like with D9, is a rather long email, so I just kind of cut chunks of it out that didn't really pertain to this. And this is an example of a different type of login where they give me, instead of the host name here as the actual www then the domain name, the host name here is the actual IP address, then the username, then the password. And down here, they've also got a, a similar login method using the IP address as the server address, just like here as the host name. And then the username is actually this username here with the at symbol and then the domain name, then the password, and then this is for a passive mode. Now, if you wanted an active mode and with Namecheap, it might require contacting them to have them set that for active. And this video is not about the difference between active and passive mode for FTP. This is just about getting your login information. So I might cover that in an upcoming video. Now, this should go without saying, but hey, I'm going to say it anyway. You should have some type of organization in place to help keep these important login details where you know where they're going to be. Whether it's something fancy like with a mind map or a spreadsheet type programs, or just some simple text document. Having this information organized and in a safe place will save you loads of time and even more so as you gain more domains. So organize now, save time later. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.